Lexi. Bill. When'd you get here? Uh, <laughs> took a little train from Boston. Nice. Welcome to uh, Great Island Boatyard. Thank you very now, much. Now Safe Harbor, Great Island. Safe Harbor, Great Island. That's right. We're in Harpswell, Maine. I think uh, TJ calls this the museum, doesn't he? The museum. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good name because every boat here is like really, really nice. I see a lot of great bright work and a lot of shiny hulls. If you have an interest in like the type of boats that people in coastal Maine like, this is like a high concentration of really fine downy style power boats and a lot of like blue water sailboats and everything in between. And everything is just maintained to the highest quality by this yard. So of course. one of the places we love to work for that reason. Absolutely. Yeah. What's the project we're working on today? Yeah, these guys brought us this project. It's a client of theirs. Um, this is an MGM 29. And, um, you know, MGMs were, including this boat, were built for a while in uh, East Boston, where our shop is now. So kind of have this shared legacy, which is pretty cool. That's really cool. Yeah. And this customer came to us because he wanted battery powered air conditioning. Well, he wanted air conditioning. The boat doesn't have a generator. And so putting in a gas generator, because it's an outboard boat, putting in a sure. gas generator is kind of, uh, you might have heard, it's like, a lot of people don't really like the gas generators. I heard they can be like temperamental. Yeah. Plus you've got, you know, the, you got the gas fumes and stuff and mm -hmm. all that going on. So um, they knew about our product and we were thrilled to, to get involved. And the thing that I think is really cool to point out is that this customer is going to keep the boat on a mooring nearby, I'm told. Um, and so that means we don't have access to shore power. So air conditioning gets its power from batteries, but when we drain the batteries, we need to have a way to charge them, right? So we have various charging sources, and one of them is solar power. Okay. And um, we worked with the boatyard to install some solar panels on the hardtop here. Take a look. <laughs> Don't fall off. <laughs> hardtop diving board, same thing. Tricky, tricky camera work. <laughs> So each of these panels is 140 watts of power, and combined, uh, they can recharge our big battery bank, our lithium battery bank, from almost dead to fully charged in two to three summer New England days, you know, when the sun's out. Wow. And so that means that the boat could be used all weekend. And you have the air conditioning running as you need it, and then when you put the boat back in the mooring, it charges all week for you to get back and the batteries be topped off again. So this sounds a lot different for me, for most, when I think of like power boating. When I think of a solar panel on a power boat, I think of a little small trickle charger for just to keep the start battery going, don't eat shore power or something like that. But when we start talking about air conditioning, I think of a lot of electricity. Sure. And solar power is going to be able to charge that back up. Like that sounds kind of crazy to me. It's yeah, nice. it's awesome. I mean, um, it's free power. While the, while the air conditioning is in use, the solar panels are offsetting it, but they're not going to produce more power than the air conditioning is using. So you're still steadily draining the batteries, but at a slower rate because the sun's out. The whole point, though, is that because the boat's not in use every day, I mean, uh, there are very few people, with the exception of liveaboards, who use their boat every day. And if the boat's sitting out in the sun 24-7, why not have a big battery bank to be harvesting that energy anytime the sun's up? And those are just future uh, generator run runtime hours that you wouldn't have needed. Makes sense to me. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about how this customer might be potentially using this boat. I, I, like, do you see them um, you know, going all the way up and down the coast of the United States? Do you see them kind of using on the weekends? Or? Well, I'm uh, yet to meet him in person. <laughs> um, so uh, you know who you are if you're watching this, but we've been told you've got a family <laughs> and um, you're excited to introduce them to the boating lifestyle and probably start doing some overnights. And so if it were my boat and I had it up in Maine, I would be really excited to you know, run out an hour or two to a really pretty anchorage on some tree-lined island and bring my family with me and then stay the night because I, I don't know, in my boating experience, like when you wake up in a new place, you get up in the morning, maybe you're up for sunrise or whatever, that first light, that's the magic. It's not, it's not just getting there, it's being able to really take in your environment. But I can also imagine that if you have family and you have kids, like keeping them comfortable is probably gonna encourage them to wanna stick with the experience and continue to 
want to have more boating experiences. So hence the air conditioning. At the end of the day, you're not only staying cool for sleeping, but you're, you're drying the boat out and dehumidifying the space, which makes it really comfortable. Extends the time out in the water. Yeah. It's more comfortable for everyone. Yeah, and that's, that's what motivates me, to be honest. Like, I just love boating, so um, if I can make people more comfortable through the experience, then more people will stay in boating and want to continue the sport. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I was told there's actually a custom situation going on with uh, one of these solar panels. Yeah, the boatyard installed these stainless handles, these, these, uh, these brackets here. It's just to tie down a paddleboard, so you have a little roof rack. That's um, pretty cool. We just had to consider that in the way we configured the solar panels, because solar panels don't like shade, naturally. Um, but if we wire them in certain ways, a little bit of shade could actually decrease the output of all the panels. So we, we broke them up and have them separated. So if we cover one panel with the paddleboard, it doesn't affect the output of the other two. Sounds like some nifty engineering. Yeah. Um, you want to check out inside, or? Yeah, let's take a all look. Right. Careful getting down from there. Nose dive. <laughs> This um, project is, is still underway. We just finished our portion and the boat's being put back together by the boat yard because um, they took the headliner out and have um, some things going on like a new windshield. Um, you can see this is where we make our solar connections. Everything comes inside and it's routed down into the electrical spaces. And one of those spaces is down here uh, where we have some of our circuit protection and we have our inverter charger. The other thing that was added to this boat is hot water capability. So you can actually run the electric hot water heater off of the inverter. So at the end of the day, you want to take a hot shower, even with just the, you know, the transom shower. After taking a swim, you get to rinse the salt off with hot water. Um, and again, that's all from electrical power. So whether it's harvested by solar or energy that's generated by the engine alternators, um, we're putting that energy into air conditioning, we're putting that energy into hot water and however else you'd like to use it. Very cool. And the energy is stored in batteries. And that battery bank is down here. I'll take a look. And we also have the air conditioning on the floor. Yep. We got the air conditioning there, and we upgraded some of the seawater plumbing. And um, yeah, and that air conditioner has an outlet here in the pilot house and in the forward sleeping cabin, which is a little bit taken apart right now. But when the boat was built, um, originally it had. Um, an air conditioning system that provided 7,000 BTUs of cooling and it had to be plugged into shore power to be used. Our system that we've installed is 12,000 BTUs of cooling, so it's an upgraded cooling capacity and it runs from batteries. So um, it's not like you're making a sacrifice by going to a battery powered system. You're actually, in this case, it's an upgrade. I mentioned that you got to charge batteries that you take power out of, right? So of course. really the main source of power beyond the solar are the engine alternators and the boatyard has recently repowered this with two brand new Mer Mercuries, which um, I'm told the boat's nice and quick now, which is pretty fun. Um, and so when these are running, we're also putting extra charge back into the battery bank. And th that charge is a, is a surplus of energy, meaning that even though the air conditioning's on, if the boat's underway, we're actually charging on top of the power that we're, we're using. So we have a net positive amount of energy going into the boat. So this customer was you know, he had the air conditioner that he currently had, or he had before, prior to us coming onto the boat, mm -hmm. that only ran at the dock. Yeah. Um, and so he was looking to get a generator installed for the just the air conditioners to run the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. um, so his options, like we kind of mentioned earlier, were having a gas generator installed, and we kind of talked quickly about mm -hmm. that, where it's you know, that can be temperamental and things like that. Mm -hmm. Or the alternative might be to get a diesel generator installed. Does that make a lot of sense? Or? That's, been, that's sometimes done. I mean, because the boat already has gasoline as a fuel for the outboards, um, if you're going to add a diesel system, that's like a lot of parts and components. A lot of folks don't see what goes into that, but there's a lot. You have a diesel tank, you have the fuel fill, the vent, you have the exhaust, you have all these things that go into just making it possible to put the diesel generator in. So, um, although diesel generators are more reliable, uh, you have a lot to install. You have two fuels in the boat and you still have the same overhead of maintenance, fuel, and the lifestyle impacts of noise and fumes and all those things. Sure. Running a generator. 
So let's say I'm a boat owner that actually might have a boat that's a little bit bigger than this, and that already has a diesel generator on board. Mm -hmm. Does do they have to scrap it to work with us, or no, not at all. Um, so the thing about a generator is that like the old mentality was you had to run your generator 24/7 in order to have power to power the air conditioning and the other 120 volt or high voltage loads. Um, the new mentality is to go with a hybrid generator system. So the generator is only run to charge the batteries. That makes sense, right? Yeah. So now, um, by using the full output of the generator anytime it's running, you maximize the value of your generator. Because not only is it running in its most efficient RPM range, kind of like cruising on the highway at 55 miles an hour, but you only have to run it for maybe a few hours a day to charge your batteries, and then use the power from those batteries with a more efficient air conditioning system um, for the rest of the 24 hours a day. And so the, our system is completely scalable. Sure. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for showing me around, Phil. Yeah, my pleasure. Appreciate thank, that. Thanks for coming out. I'll catch you at the next one. Yeah, sounds good.